Hello, my friends. I uh, just want to say, um, these days that we're living in, they're very perilous times. Um, days that that our ancestors could speak of, um, but not actually truly understand what it is like. And it's because the world is at the palm of our hands. At the tip of our fingers is all the knowledge and understanding of anything you could ever want to learn. Uh, that has to do with flesh upon this earth. Uh, we have the internet, we have vehicles that travel great distances all around the world. Uh, these kind of things, people in the past could not understand the gravity of just how perilous the times can be. Uh, you know, before if there was an issue, it was, it was generally within a family uh, within a town, within a neighborhood, and, and now seemingly the, the burdens and the pressures of the entire world are put upon this people. And that's why I say to look upon this generation of people, this generation that we live in and that we examine and that we walk in every single day, look at it and mourn for this people. Because, you know, imagine our ancestors, wondering what that would feel like to have the whole guilt and pressure and sorrows and pain of an entire world put upon them at the tip of their fingers all day long. And then you think about what Christ dealt with, how he took the sin of the world upon himself on the cross. He took all of that for a people who would be able to relate to what he did 2,000 years ago so that they could, in a way, recognize what he did. For we get to feel but a taste of that, a drop of that. Uh, we get to experience with all this technology and all these wonders and all this travel but a sip of what it would be like to be like God and to see and recognize even the thoughts and the feelings of every single human being that's ever walked the earth all the time. All the dreams, the desires, all the pain, the sorrows, all the guilt, everything God experiences. And you know what, what we sit here and experience now living in this generation, having the cares and concerns of the world thrown at us all day long by everyone and that taste of it that we can experience look at what it does to us it turns us mad as a people as a culture as a society we turn mad we lose our minds collectively which is why you see the culture and the decline that it is and the state of the world that we live in look upon this people and mourn mourn over it, mourn over us all, and beg and plead the Lord to have mercy upon his people in this generation. Because mankind in the flesh was not built to experience what we are. After the fall, it had to come to this. In order for us to ascend again, we must first descend, just as Christ did. And we understand this, but it's still doesn't take away the sting of the moment that you live in. Look upon this people and mourn. Because we are in the times of sorrows where indeed mourning is the heart of the Lord because what we get to experience of this world, just imagine what he would be experiencing of all of us. And all of us who are experiencing even the taste of this. What it would it be like for God who knows all things? Think about that for just a second and mourn over the state of this people and the sorrows that have been put out through this world in this time period that we live in right now. And then recognize something else. Recognize that the state of Israel, the house of God right now, has fallen to such a state of apostasy that she doesn't even know that she is Israel anymore. She has no idea who she is. She seeks after other gods, foreign gods, any god, Anything that she believes has power, she holds on to it, latches on to it, reaches for it, and yet can never find anything. It's always one thing to the next, the wind blowing and the leaf blowing off with it. 
and look upon why that's happened. You know, in the world, in the West, uh, we have a free market economy, essentially. Um, What that means, of course, is if there's a demand, there will be a supply of it. We call that capitalism. If somebody desires a home computer, you can bet that the Dells and the HPs and the Compacts and all of those ones of the world will build a computer and send it out as there is profit to be made in the bu- in the building of that computer. In the world, you have capitalism, free market. If there is a desire, somebody will feel that desire for a cost, for a price. And in the house of Israel, it's no different. For Jesus came and overturned the tables whenever he saw it in the temple, what he saw what we can see today. That the temple of God, the house of Israel, is not filled with people who are sincere. But the house of God is filled with those who are hirelings. And what is a hireling? We learn about them in John. But that he is a hireling and not a shepherd, whose own sheep are not. Seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catches them, and the sheepeth scatter. A hireling is one that does not love the sheep. But what they love is what they get from the sheep. And the hireling recognizes that there is a desire, a need, a want within the house of Israel. Because they too are of that house. And they too want, and they too need, and they too desire. And they see this desire for things of God, a hunger, a thirst. And they themselves have this hunger and this thirst for the things of God. But rather than lower themselves for a little while, to be born again, to fall, to let one's pride be separated from themselves, to to admit that, that we don't know everything and that we can't, and that our ways are not God's ways, and God teach us your ways, rather than take the way that is necessary to enter into the kingdom, to be born again, to truly get to know and walk with the Lord. The hirelings take the shortcut, and they say, let us go over here, for we know the Lord, And let those who will come and follow us get to know the Lord through us. And we will build a gate, and we will put walls around that gate, and they will enter in, and they will learn the house of God through our means and our ways. We are born again. We have done nothing wrong as they wipe the sides of their mouth. And as the sheep come in through their gate, any sheep that rewards them, they are greatly accepted and praised and lauded. And the hirelings receive great praise from the sheep and receive money from the sheep. But it is the Lord who says, one cannot serve both God and money. One will make a decision off of that. And it is this house, this hireling economy that they have built, where if they see an ear that tickles, they will be the ones who are there to provide the scratch. So they continuously provide that scratch of an ear that continuously tickles, and they receive money and praise and honor and glory, and they sit at the finest seats, and they build compilations of themselves and praise each other up and give great glory and honor to all of those who accept their way and their gate and reject all of those who come against them and reject all of those who come differently than them because their way is God's way, and all who follow them believe that the hireling has loved them. But I tell you that the hireling has not loved them. And when the time of great troubles, great distress, comes upon this world, and all these sheep who have been caught with the hirelings, when that time of great troubles comes, those hirelings that those sheep run to, they will not be found. As those hirelings will enter into the darkness, Because they owe a debt that every last penny that they have taken from the sheep will be paid back in full with interest. They will pay it back. They will be in the outer courts of darkness. All these hirelings. Judgment will come upon them suddenly. But for the sheep who will be scattered, 
I am the good shepherd and know my sheep, and my sheep know me, saith the Lord in John. As the Father knoweth me, even so now the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. And when the sheep are scattered at this great destruction that is coming to the world, when the sheep are scattered and the hirelings have all taken off, there will be that shepherd that they have not known. And that shepherd, when they finally are able to hear his voice, they will come. The scales will be removed from their eyes and they will see because God so loved the world that he will come even in darkness to rescue the sheep who are lost. And that is coming whenever the great tribulations begins. I tell you that do not be afraid of these perilous days that you see happening right before your eyes right now because 10,000 will fall to the right of you and 10,000 will fall to the left of you and you will walk straight between the middle of them. Anyone who has actually known the Lord and been born again, anyone who has fallen to oneself and recognized that they are not the answer, their hands can't protect them no matter how much they buy and sell, their goods will not save them from what is coming into this world. All those ones who have truly mourned over the house of Israel, the state that the house is in, nothing will be able to catch on to them. For we will walk through the valley of the shadow of the death and we will enter into the ark as the ark closes its doors. But I tell you, those hirelings who will run up after that, right now they're telling the sheep exactly what they want to hear rather than prepare them for what is actually coming. They're saying, the Lord is with us, how can we fall? The very same thing that I'm saying to you sincerely, that the Lord is with those who know him, and we will not fall. They say it without knowing the Lord, and they say it without love. And they will run up to the doors of that ark, and they will say, but Lord, Lord, look at all these things we've done for you. Look at this. You told us to go and build a ministry, and we did. And we profited off of them from it because the ministry was helping the cause of God and, and we got what was given to us for our flesh in this world too. And the Lord will say, I never knew you. Depart from me because the hirelings do not love the sheep. They only tell the sheep exactly what the sheep believe they want to hear rather than the truth because they themselves don't want to hear the truth that ye have not been born again, that you have not known God, that you have not known his heart, that you have not fallen. Because each and every one of the hirelings and all the sheep who follow them, you will know them by their deeds, as they are not sheep, they are wolves. And they will devour each other whenever the darkness comes. But for some of those sheep who are lost right now amongst that, those sheep will find the shepherd when the time comes. They will find the Lord Jesus Christ and they will go with him. And even though they walk through perilous times, not one hair will be harmed from their head as they walk. It's coming, this event, the destruction, it's coming upon us and it's coming upon us quickly. There's been so many things that I've seen over this last week. To know that the destruction is near. It may even be tonight, it may be tomorrow, I don't know. But I know it's coming and it's near. Be one who has called out and cried to the Lord of the state of this house that you see your people living in. Break all your pride. And leave all the hirelings behind, follow them not. As the only place that the hirelings will lead you to is into the pits. God bless.